good fortune to all friends of the Grummels. Welcome friends of the Grummels to Shinies and Lucky Doos. My name is Sherview, and with the holiday season upon us, we thought it would be a good time to explore the lore behind the legend of Winter Vale. We'll begin by reading the in-game book entitled The Feast of Winter Vale, which can be obtained from a grumpy tauren by the name of Furmund if you're Horde, or a disgruntled dwarf by the name of Goli if you're Alliance. The legend reads as follows. The Feast of Winter Vale. The later seasons of Azeroth are marked as a time of change in many cultures. The dwarves in the Tauren especially look to a legend of the coming Winter Vale, the blanketing of the land in snow, thus heralding a time of renewal, as a time for celebration. Though the understanding of the legends that the races of Azeroth share are not dissimilar, the ways they choose to acknowledge them are as diverse as the races themselves. The Legend of Great Father Winter the term Winter Vale is said to stem from a supernatural being referred in many cultures to as Great Father Winter. As he would walk the land late in the seasons, winter itself would be his billowing cloak. In his wake was the blanketing of the land in snow, and thus it's said that the Great Father Winter would cast his wintry veil over the land. Though parts of Azeroth may lie in snow, it gives the land time for rebirth and renewal. The Dwarves Ever consumed with the research of their origins, the dwarves choose to celebrate the season as a recognition of Great Father Winter himself. They consider him to be the personification of one of the ancients of Azeroth, the Titans. Much as they claim lineage in one degree or another to these mystical beings, they consider their snowy home of Dunmoreau as the prime example of Great Father Winter's blessings. The Tauren the Tauren and their shamanistic understanding of winter, along with their recent emergence into druidic endeavors, fit in well with the legend of Winter Vale. They focus almost entirely on the renewing aspects of the lore, however, leaving legend worship to those races, as they view it, less in tune with the nature of things. Many Tauren choose this time as the right time to give thanks for the blessings of their new home in Mulgore. Feasting the idea of feasting during this time of year is one that traces its origins to the legend itself. As Great Father Winter walked Azeroth, bringing winter in his wake, it is said he would provide a bounty for those who welcomed his presence. As such, the idea of feasting during the Winter Vale would bring together communities as they shared whatever they had. Typically, a single day of merriment and feasting welcomed the change, all in anticipation of the land's renewal. Modern Day Observation other cultures have begun to recognize the Feast of Winter Vale as a time of great celebration, though not in the same traditions as the legend bases it in. Customs, often unrelated to anything other than a chance for celebration and gift exchange, have made their way into modern day observation of the season. Even the image of Great Father Winter is sometimes used, but more as a harbinger of commercial exploit rather than as a supernatural titan. So what did you think of the story? Now that we've read through each section of the book, let's get into our analysis. The Feast of Winter Vale is a study comparing the cultures of the Tauren and Dwarves, who each celebrate Winter Vale differently. They both look forward to the blanketing of the land in snow, which heralds the time of renewal and bounty. But while these races share a similar understanding of the legend, they celebrate the change of seasons with differing cultural practices, not unlike our real-world traditions around the holidays. Let's start by explaining where their differences stem from. The dwarves are a race very focused on their past, and their explorers and historians go to great lengths to uncover the truths of their ancestry. It's due to this that they sometimes come into conflict with the Tauren, who prefer the land remain unexcavated. There are quests involving the dwarven excavations in Mulgore, as well as in the Barrens, which illustrate this perfectly. The dwarves seek to uncover historical relics, which deeply distresses the Tauren who revere the land, nature, and the elements above all else. The Tauren, in contrast, fear their past, which they associate with darker times, where they had lost their way to the arts of war and deceit. They prefer to see the land undisturbed, as they know of the dangers lurking in the deep places of the earth. In fact, a quest in Classic WoW's Stone Talon Mountains shows us just what the Tauren think of the Dwarves' ancestors. 
A Tauren by the name of Morragal discovers that an ancient earthen named Gogorok has awakened within a resonite cask. He believes the earthen are a dark threat to the land, and requests that Horde players slay the earthen before he endangers the whole of Stone Talon. As you can see, the Tauren and the Dwarves do not have the most friendly of relationships. These cultural differences extend into the Feast of Wintervale festivities, as they end up affecting, first and foremost, the two races' views on the Great Father Winter character. The term Wintervale actually stems from the billowing, wintry cloak of the supernatural being known as Great Father Winter. Where Great Father Winter passes, a winter veil falls over the lands where he walks, blanketing them in snow. This aspect of the holiday dawns inspiration from a real-world supernatural being known as Jack Frost, a being who is the personification of winter, and was sometimes depicted as a giant. It's thought that our mythical real-world Jack Frost might have originated from Norse Anglo-Saxon winter customs, as he has a whole chapter dedicated to him in the Finnish Kalevala, which is a compilation of their oral traditions. This would be an amazing nod in game to the Norse roots of the story, as the dwarves hail from the icy lands of Northrend and descend from the Earthen who bear a connection to the Titan Keepers and share Nordic roots with the Vrykul. The dwarves, being consumed by their research into their origins and their connection to the Titans via the Earthen, celebrate Wintervale primarily by paying respects to the Great Father Winter character himself. They view Great Father Winter as the personification of one of the Titans, whom they claim distant ancestry to. However, it's more likely that Great Father Winter, if he truly was a giant to begin with, would have been one of the Titan Keepers. Perhaps Hodir, favored by Golganeth and who used to live within the Temple of Winter up in Northrend. This personification also has ties to our real world holidays, as Father Christmas is considered to live within the far snowy north and was a bestower of gifts. It has also been rumored that there may be a connection between Father Christmas and Odin, who led the wild hunt during Yuletide and who liked to walk the earth disguised among the mortal races just like the Titan Keeper Odin. Many of Yuletide's traditions carried over into Christmas, and it's thought that the old, cloaked, blue-hooded, white-bearded gift-giver of the North, who rode through the sky on his eight-legged horse, morphed later into Father Christmas over time, and finally merged with Saint Nicholas to become what we now know as Santa Claus. The Tauren, on the other hand, shun figure worship in favor of giving thanks for the blessing of bounty in their new home of Mulgore. They focus on the renewal aspects of the tradition through their deep connection to the Earth Mother, nature, and their shamanistic understanding of winter as a time symbolizing rest and rejuvenation. This is very similar to the shamanistic practices of the Samai people of Lapland, the home of Santa Claus. Traditionally, it is the red and white mushrooms of these shaman which originally made the eight-legged horse self near fly and eventually led to the tales of the flying reindeer who pull Santa's sleigh, as referenced in-game through the Yoramin One quest where players must rescue Metz and the reindeer from the abominable Grinch. As Great Father Winter walked through the lands of Azeroth, it's said that he would provide a bounty to those who would welcome his presence, bringing together the communities and peoples of Azeroth. This was done on a single day to welcome the change of seasons and in anticipation of the land's renewal. Much like in our own world traditions, the people of Azeroth gather the winter stores and eat what could not be preserved for the long winter nights so it would not spoil. If they didn't prepare and welcome the change in seasons, they would have to scrounge for food in the harsh winter climate. The final page of the book on modern day observations discusses how the Feast of Winter Vale has changed within the years. The changes from folklore to commercialization is the reason we were given the book to read over in the first place, by either the grumpy Tauren or the disgruntled old dwarf. It states that many other cultures have started to view the Feast of Winter Vale as a time for celebration without recognizing the true significance of its origins. While these celebrations don't always have the same traditions as the original legends, it's still celebrated with as much gusto and fervor as it was in the past, but with more weight given to frivolous gift exchange and feasting. 
Sometimes the image of Great Father Winter is still used, this being a dwarf or an orc dressed up in red and white winter garb, similar to our own Santa Claus, and much like our own Santa, it is used mostly for commercial purposes rather than for folklore observance. We can see this in-game through the goblins of the Smoky Wood Pastures. So what do you think about the Feast of Wintervale? Did you like the Titan-worshipping dwarves reliving old memories through myths and legends? Perhaps you prefer the gentle, nature-loving ways of the Tauren, or maybe the presents, feasts, and joy of the celebrations are enough. We'd love to hear your thoughts either below in the comments section or over in our Discord. Links can be found if you would like to join the community down in the description below. Either way, we'd like to leave you with a poem taken from Blizzard's official World of Warcraft website. Twas the feast of great winter, and all through the land, all the races were running with snowballs in hand. The cooks were all frantic, and for those in the know, swoops and owls were crashing like new fallen snow. Cookies and eggnog were consumed by all, as the snowballs flew freely and drunks smashed into walls. May your feast of great winter be one merry and bright, and from all here at Blizzard, we wish you a fun night. Farewell, friends of the Gremmels. May your feet find good trails.